Welcome to part two of this blog series. This one's a microservice for handling SendGrid event webhooks. Now that we're able to successfully send outbound emails, let's make sure that we know how our customers are engaging with these emails. And that's where event webhooks come in. Let's go over the architectural diagram. Now in the upper left, we've sent emails out successfully and they go to inbox providers who in turn send them to the recipients, the email end users. Now both the inbox providers and the end users are generating email events. Think delivery events like opened, processed, queued, blocked, and engagement events like open, clicks, or spam reports. These important events are sent back to SendGrid and then SendGrid in turn will deliver them via your event webhook to an endpoint of your choice or multiple endpoints. This solution provides two options to receive event webhooks initially, but they all end up in an SQS queue and then they're processed by a Lambda function. SendGrid sends events in batches. So the Lambda function divides them out into individual events and then sends those individual events to an SNS topic for additional processing. Additional processing can mean just saving it to an S3 bucket or to a database like DynamoDB or it can trigger additional events like to a CDP or CRM or to dashboard apps or your application or really whatever your needs. This engagement data is crucial, so you certainly wanna handle it and you wanna build from the beginning with this engagement data in mind. So let's get to the build. We'll start in the SendGrid console. Under settings, we'll go to mail settings and then event webhooks. Click on create new webhook, and then we'll enter whatever you want in friendly name. And then we'll just put in a temporary or fake post URL, because we need to build the actual endpoint in a future step. Now, for engagement data, you can choose whatever you need, and you also can have multiple endpoints. But for right now, we'll just use open and delivered events. We'll want to enable signed event webhooks so that we can securely know that these events are coming from SendGrid. So we'll save it and then we'll come back and then get the verification key. So we'll copy that and we'll use it later. Now we can go to the repo linked from this blog and then under code we can either clone the repo or download a zip file. I'll download a zip file, expand it, and then open it in my code editor. The main stack is SendGrid event webhook handler. So we'll open a terminal window and we'll go into that stack. So I'll CD to AWS stacks and then CD into SendGrid event webhook handler. And first we need to expand out some helper node libraries. So we will CD into layers, layer send grid, event webhook, node, JS, and we'll npn install. This will help us verify webhooks are coming from SendGrid. And then we'll go back up a few directories. Next, we need to enter some configuration data in the template.yaml file. This is the main file for this AWS stack. And we want to set the event webhook user. So this is for basic authentication. So put whatever you want in here and always remember to store your, var your variables using AWS parameter stores or secret manager. Don't ever store your variables in code like this, uh, but we'll do it just for a POC and get to, to get through this blog. And then we also need to enter that verification key that we created in the webhook. So we'll search for webhook public and we are using uh, first the S3, so API key to S3 uh, webhook. So we'll go ahead and we'll remove this value and we'll enter the key that we copied when we initially created that uh, webhook uh, in the SendGrid console. So go ahead and I'll paste that in here. And now we're ready to deploy. Back at the terminal window, I'll run SAM build to build everything locally. And then I'll run SAM deploy minus minus guided with the stack name. You can copy and paste this command from the blog post if you like. 
Now we have to answer a few questions. The stack name is uh, set already, select your region. And then you do need to put in a unique name for these two parameters. So I just put in a random string and then I added something that will make me sure that I know what it is. So this is raw events bucket. Uh, we need to do the same thing for Q name. So you know, S3 buckets need to be unique, which is why you have to go through this step. So we'll name these two and then we'll answer a few more questions and then deployment can begin. Uh, these are all default. Uh, we do get asked about this particular endpoint, send grid event to S3 function has no authentication. We want to say that that's yes. Uh, you'll have to look into this deeper for your own requirements, uh, but there is basic authentication you know, in place. So from there, the deployment will begin. I'll speed this up, but it only takes a few minutes to fully deploy to your AWS account. Once completed, you can go to your AWS console and then go to cloud formation and then actually see that the stack has been successfully deployed. So here we are on the AWS console and we'll click in there and we'll click on outputs and we want to grab the actual endpoints that were generated. At the bottom, we have SG event webhook to S3 and to SQS. We're using the S3 API one, so we'll copy that link address and then we'll put it over uh, into a notepad and kind of build the endpoint that we're going to use. Now we need to add basic authentication to this, so we'll just add that after the HTTPS colon slash slash. We'll add the username colon password and then the at symbol, so that sets up our basic authentication. And then we need to add a path to the end of that. So we'll go ahead and add the path to the end. And that's send grid events. And then we'll copy this whole endpoint. We'll return to the send grid console. We will select edit for this event webhook. And then we'll replace that temporary post URL. There it has the basic authentication and the endpoint, and those are the events we're going to use, and we'll save that. And now we're ready to start receiving events. So it's great that we can receive events, but we want to do something with them. So let's return to the terminal window, and we'll deploy the, the downstream kind of processor stacks. So we'll go up a directory, we'll cd into save event webhooks to S3, which as you would guess, saves these events to S3. We'll run SAM build, and then we'll run the SAM deploy minus minus guided with the stack name, and all the defaults are fine. So we'll just click through those, and that will spin up pretty quickly. We'll speed it up a little bit. And then once this completes, we'll do the same thing for the other two stacks. So that's save event webhook to DynamoDB. That spins up a DynamoDB instance and prepares it to receive events and save to DynamoDB. And then there's a second one, or sorry, a third one that's generic send grid events handler, which all it is is a Lambda function and just sends the event to console.log so you can see you know, what's going on and build whatever webhook or action trigger you know, that you need. So infrastructure is a code and AWS cloud formation, AWS SAM is what we're using here, but it's really neat how you can spin up all these real resources uh, quickly and also efficiently per the specs that you've put in. So this last stack, that's the generic SendGrid event handler is spinning up. And we'll speed that up a little bit. Again, all these take just a couple minutes to spin up.
And when they're done, we can return to cloud formation. I'll refresh and here are these new stacks uh, that we have all ready to go, all ready to process events that come in to uh, our system from SendGrid. So if you did part one of this series, you can use the SNS uh, to actually send a, an email to generate all these events or kind of kick things off. So I'll click on uh, this outbound microservice topic. I'll publish an event similar to what we did in the other blog. If you send an email via SendGrid a different way, that's fine too. want to point out that we have categories and custom arguments. That's best practices. We have a to and a verified from. I'll publish the event and I should receive that message you know, right away. Uh, but when that message is delivered, when I click on it, when I open it, whatever events I've subscribed to, those will start to appear uh, in our uh, event handler processors. So the first place we can look is in AWS S3. So we'll go from the AWS console to S3. And we'll look in the Twilio SendGrid event webhooks bucket that was just created. And then these are separated by date. You can change this if you like. And we see uh, these are separated by event types. So we have some delivered. So uh, in the delivered folder of that bucket, we can go ahead and click on that. Here's the JSON file of that object and we can take a look. We have the API key, a timestamp, we have the categories that were passed in, we have the email address, there's the actual event, uh, the request ID that's locally uh, created, uh, then of course the SendGrid message ID, uh, the Twilio foo was a custom argument that we passed in. So really everything that you need to be able to send to your analytics and whatever systems uh, you, you want to process these events in. I'll switch over to DynamoDB. Here's the DynamoDB table that was spun up. I'll click on Explore Table Items. And we can see that this event was placed into this Dynamo table as well. So there's the partition key and sort key. Again, these can be whatever you like, but you see the idea how easily these can be dumped into your a data stores, whether that's S3 or DynamoDB or some other data source. Uh, lastly, we'll click into Lambda. We'll find that Lambda function that was created as a generic SendGrid handler. And this is a really simple Lambda. All it does is just spit out uh, the event to uh, a console.log. So we'll go over to CloudWatch and uh, we'll look at the single event that's in logs and we'll click at the log stream and there out to console.log is the message. So you can just envision it being able to do whatever you need on these parameters internally uh, to digest this message and handle accordingly. Uh, again, we'll go look at the code. It's pretty simple, but there's the example of the event. And of course, you know, what's next? Send it to, uh, based on events type or send it to your CDP or CRM or really kind of whatever you need to do. So to recap, we spun up a microservice to be able to handle events coming in from SendGrid generated by emails that you send out. So it's great to be able to send emails, but it's even better to really know what you're sending, how they performed, and how your end users, your customers are engaging with those emails. And that's what this system does. So emails coming in. Uh, going out to inbox providers, to end users, and then engagement events coming back. They're sent to you via event webhooks, and then it goes through a process so that you can store them and then be able to handle them however your business needs. So that's the microservice for handling webhook events from Twilio SendGrid. Thank you for watching. The third and final blog in this series is Inbound Parse. Inbound Parse allows you to receive inbound emails from your end users and handle them programmatically.